press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello my dear students, welcome back to your social science class. Okay, so we had started with a new chapter that is uh, electoral politics, right? So when it comes to electoral politics, we have discussed so many things. Why election is important, what actually is election, how it is conducted, right? So these things we did disc discuss already, right? So when it comes to election, see as we all know that yes, we are allowed to choose a representative. So uh, yesterday, while discussing uh, certain things, uh, yesterday what did we discuss in the previous class? So we did discuss about voters list. Okay, we even did discuss about um, education qualification for a candidate and how a candidate has been chosen, right? So all those things we did discuss. So if at all, imagine uh, like, uh, yes, uh, let's take an example. Now if you have your class, right? you have many uh, friends of yours, right? So whom they, uh, uh, like they choose as candidates for the election, right? Uh, to choose a representative. Okay, to choose your uh, class representative, uh, like a few uh, students are chosen. So how do they choose them? On what basis do they choose them? Do they have any particular criteria to choose all these people? Definitely they'll be finding out, right? They always see that, okay, if at all this person is really good, or say like maybe the person is uh, having good records with his education, okay? Or maybe like he is very good at co-curricular activities, or probably he is a known person, okay? With uh, all the, uh, maybe he is an all-rounder, okay? So these kind of people will be chosen, right? As a class representative. Apart from that, he should have certain leadership quality. How well he can handle the class, okay? How good he is at to handle the class, or say how he is, how he communicates. So all these things, will be known right so how is that you get to know okay when it comes to this is regarding your class representative election to know those uh, people uh, they maybe like they come they introduce to you people like what exactly they are what are their qualification uh, how what are their interests all these things and what exactly they'll be doing if at all they win the election or if at all you choose them as a class representative what all things will be changed so all these things will be discussed right so this usually happens at the class level right so now that is fine how the person will get to know Okay, regarding the representative, okay, regarding the candidate, how they get to know when it comes to election, okay, general election or even your uh, uh, like a local level election and all. So how do you get to know? See, definitely for that, you need to know. First thing is you have to know the qualification of the person. So do, yesterday there was a question right should we actually keep any of the uh, qualification in the particular saying that yes this has to be there if at all a person wants to be a candidate for uh, election uh, will that be possible is it okay if at all we consider that particular thing will that be fine so this was a question right so we came up with a uh, answer or say the solution saying that uh, no uh, it would be a kind of a restriction when it comes to democratic uh, election or say democratic form of a government. If at all we put up a qualification, then definitely how many percent of people will go home? 90 percent, more than 90 percent. So yesterday we did discuss about this, right? So there, the, now when it comes to election or say when it comes to the representative or taking care of the people as a representative, they really don't need any, like uh, the basic education is very much important. The main thing what they need is the skills. So if at all a person is having good skills, then we don't think that yes, they need any good, uh, any uh, so and so kind of uh, qualification and all because that is not taken up. The reason is people will never uh, understand or say, say when it comes to education, if at all we keep a particular education, it goes very difficult. It would be a restriction on people because there are few people who are not educated, but definitely they have such a skill that they are handling business, 
they know how to carry out the educational institution to carry out other works okay that's the reason what happens so like people don't give much importance for the uh, education here okay that's the reason like when it comes to a representative there is no particular education as such that has been mentioned for example we we did discuss about uh, cricket right when they choose people as a cricket players representing india at different levels so how do we choose them on the basis of the skills whatever skills they have got on the basis of that itself we choose them if at all we keep a particular uh, educational qualification it will not be uh, good right that will not be possible for uh, uh, choosing the uh, choosing people for playing cricket and all right because that would be an uh, that would be a restriction right because there are people who are very skilled who are having real skills but maybe they are not educated so that's the reason putting a or giving a particular education obviously again if at all the education has to be declared or decided then it would be the people who would be deciding saying that yes let this be the educational qualification if at all a person wants to be a representative so that again um, will be chosen okay that will be decided by the people themselves because people are the one who actually uh, they choose their representative right so that's the reason the freedom also the freedom regarding the educational qualification so whatever educational qualification a person should have if at all they that has to be decided then definitely it would be the people who will be deciding on that okay so that is what is being said now uh, let me come to the sit actual situation now see how do you get to know that a person has been educated or probably he has got uh, so and so uh, talent in him so and so skill in him what exactly he'll be doing if at all i choose a particular representative how do we get to know definitely it would be through election campaigning itself right so what is election campaign you might have come across very recently this election happened right 2019 so then you might have come across people coming together to your house saying that yes namaste we are from so and so a political party and he is our representative please vote so that you know we are we are planning for so and so thing like Uh, they come to they uh, come with so many people around the, them and they meet you people saying that yes what all development they are planning uh, what actually they want to do all these things they do right yes that itself is called campaigning so as you people know that the main purpose okay of conducting what is the main purpose of conducting election is it just uh, choosing of representative then what yes we are choosing our representative through election next what so when it comes to this okay see we have chosen our representative so that they can form the government okay and a chance is given uh, we give a chance to our people okay to choose their representative no doubt once they choose the representative with that they have to again decide how the, who will be fa forming the government how it will be formed and even the policies they prefer to follow okay because there are so many policies few may accept few things few may not accept few things right so it depends upon people so now imagine uh, like when it comes to political parties they come up with many policies right so if at all you are uh, satisfied with any of the policies definitely you would want or you would like that person to be your representative because their policies are good right whatever they are doing for the betterment of the society for the welfare of the society you really appreciate those things so maybe that's the reason you want to or uh, that particular or to that particular person. person right yes so now as we know that yes the main purpose here again okay, uh, uh, that is related to conducting election is nothing but you have to choose your representative who will be forming the government and the policies they prefer like whatever policies you want to Uh, bring or you want to have for your for the betterment of the society now if at all they are planning for those things then definitely you would want those policies to be applied right so that's the reason you are choosing a particular representative so now there should be an open discussion okay just to know who stands better 
so to know who stands better campaigning is good okay so know who is a better representative which government is good or say policy is good so how do you get to know that what kind of policies these people are planning for excuse me which government stands good what which representative is good so if at all see how do you get to know all these things it is uh, due to campaigning itself right so what happens the people should come together just as for the discussion so what happens if at all you are planning to choose any of the representative then definitely there has to be some background right you have to know exactly like uh, yes why i should choose that particular person as my representative it may be because they have got good policy it may be because he is good like educated he knows he has the skill or maybe uh, like uh, yes he is talented okay so uh, that's the reason you would like to choose that person so there should be a discussion so that's the reason the election campaign are held so that they can fulfill these purpose as you all know the main purpose is to understand the political party you have to know like whom you have to vote okay not only that when you are choosing a government okay when you are choosing a government definitely it should be like which government is good which government stands good whose policy is good to know all these things you have to fulfill like uh, you know it it has to be fulfilled through campaigning itself so now how does the campaigning takes place is there any law that tells that okay you have to uh, continue or you have to conduct the campaigning only for these many days or you have to start it from this day itself yes it is constitution okay again these things and all is mentioned under constitution itself okay yes so the campaigning it takes place for a period of almost two weeks that to between uh, the announcement of candidates that are being chosen okay the list of candidates once the list of candidates is ready okay they are having certain eligibility and all if at all they fulfill all those eligibilities then definitely they would get a chance there okay like the final list will be announced from that day till the date of polling nothing but till the day of election wherein uh, the citizens are allowed to elect their representative so you vote it right you vote through a, earlier it was ballot system now it is your electronic uh, voting machines wherein you go and you choose your uh, representative right yes so when at the date of polling before see do remember the campaigning has to be stopped before 48 hours of uh, this uh, election okay like yes so now when it comes to this so the once the final list is ready and uh, from then till the date almost of, uh, for a period of 14 days will be given okay 14 days will be given so that you can campaign you can uh, you know make your uh, uh, people understand what actually you are what what are your policies what is that you are planning if at all you win the election to have discussion with the people okay to have discussion with the people you have to conduct a campaign right so campaigning is allowed for almost 14 days so that you can do the campaigning and win the hearts of people so that you get the votes so what are the works done here so political leaders they have to address the election meetings contact the voters okay nothing but the voters okay and political leaders mobilize their supporters so these are the few things what the political leader will be doing no doubt he has to attend all the meetings because he should know what actually is happening what actually how the election will be conducted whether who is like how many election commissions are there is it only one or is it like a separate one uh, are there any rules and regulations for these things so how the election is been uh, at what all uh, like uh, how many wards are there so all these things a person should know the political leader should know that's the reason every now and then the election meetings will be conducted and even they will be having the discussion right how to spend the money in what way it has to be spent so what are the plans for the plans will be discussed there then again they have to contact the voters this to get the votes right they have to get the vote so that's the reason they have to conduct vote uh, like they have to meet the voters okay they have to contact them and even political leaders they mobilize their supporters they should know the supporters right who are supporting them who are in their favor okay who are not this has to be known apart from that like it is only about these days the leaders work for months together before the election so yes 
they do not work only for the 14 days. As I told you, two weeks, so, so or, they don't work for only 14 days. They work months together before election itself. Before election is conducted, almost months together, they sit, they work, they, you know, like, think what actually they can do for the betterment of the society to win the election, what all things they can do. So all these things they discuss, they, you know, they'll be planning for all these things. So months together, they have to work, they do not have any other option. So we can see the campaigns in news every day, okay, during election. So this is very common, right? Our uh, media, okay, totally the newspaper will be uh, having all the advertisements. So that is where uh, the newspapers and all, they gain much more importance. And even the media, like apart from a newspaper, the other medias, maybe even uh, all the Facebook or say uh, even television, everywhere, news, everywhere you can see that, yes, the campaigning will be shown. So election is very important, right? It is important both for the representative and the people because every person will be having that uh, curiosity who will win, who will be, uh, which will be the next government that will be ruling us. So whether they are capable, are they having that much of uh, capacity to take care of us? So all this will be, a, uh, will be just a question mark. But everybody will be having that, uh, what I can say is, uh, uh, totally curious uh, regarding the election. So the next is, yes, so election campaign. See, when it comes to election campaign, uh, no doubt, as I told you, they, uh, the political leaders, they work months together. It is not about days or uh, only few days or weeks, but they work months together. And during these campaigns itself, the political parties try to make the people know what major issues are. So this is a chance, right? Yes. So they get a chance there to tell what the earlier government has done, okay? Or maybe like they would uh, not criticize, actually. They don't criticize, but yes, they come up with major issues. For example, if at all any area is suffering from uh, water shortage, okay, they are not getting sufficient water. Definitely, these uh, uh, political leaders, they would target that, saying that yes, you have these kind of issues there, right? Yes, definitely this would be done. So that is how it, uh, it goes. So during these uh, campaigns, what they do? They come up with all the uh, new or say major issues because people have to know, because people will not be aware of all these issues or probably uh, they feel that, okay, however we choose the leader, they will not do anything, all these things. These sorrows are uh, with people and it would be carried always because uh, they expect many things and if at all the expectations are not reached by the representatives, so definitely it would be hurting them, right? Yes. So the, when these campaigns are conducted, what these people will do, they would target all those things saying that, yes, uh, there, is, uh, there are uh, so and so major issues and definitely if at all you people, you help me to win, definitely. I would solve all these things. So there are certain uh, uh, things like see most of the people okay like uh, they came up with slogans okay and even they are successful like uh, because of the successful slogans here because different people have uh, different thoughts different representatives have got different uh, things as a major issue. Now taking that major issue itself what these people will do they will come up with a slogan for example uh, Garibi Hatav okay by Indra Gandhi that was in the year 1971 for the Lok Sabha election and what did she promise she uh, did promising that okay people uh, to reorient all the policies okay anything that was uh, making the, these people to face uh, the poverty so reorientation so nothing but they will uh, come up with new policies or they would uh, place certain new uh, things so that there won't be any poverty at all okay so uh, this was uh, something that uh, Garibe Hatav, that is remove poverty, was a slogan used by Indira Gandhi, the then like uh, Prime Minister. Yes, so she has come up with the slogan. There are few more slogans. That is, uh, land to the tiller. Okay, so this uh, land front, uh, you, the left front. Okay, they did used uh, this particular thing uh, that to in West Bengal election in 1977. Okay, land to the tiller. So. Nothing but, see, zamindari system we had, right? Yes, what is this zamindari system? Nothing but, 
uh, there would be the person, like imagine I'm the zamindar, okay, like I have got much more land, but I'm not at all doing any work over there. I'm not even taking care of the agricultural works or I'm not at all uh, giving time there. But what I'm doing, I have uh, let it to some uh, people, okay, few people as farmers who can take care of the land. And definitely they, those people are chilling there, okay, they are toiling a whole day for the work. So now they came up with a uh, particular slogan saying that the one who is the tiller there, nothing but the one who is taking care of the land, let the land belong to him. So this came in West Bengal. Okay. So next is uh, safe democracy. That was uh, given by Janta Party uh, under the leadership of Jay Prakash Narayan uh, that for the Lok Sabha election in the year 1977. So what did they promise? They promised to undo the excess committed during emergency and restore civil liberties. So there was uh, there were so many problems during the emergency which was called, which was not actually necessary. Uh, let us not discuss about it. Okay. Uh, yes. But yes. Uh, this particular thing, it came saying that, it came out saying that, yes, let us save democracy because people have to be saved, right? Their rights have to be saved. They are uh, like, uh, whatever they are expecting, we should reach their expectations. So that's the reason uh, pro they did promise saying that undo the excess that has committed during the emergency and restore all the civil liberties. The liberty is given, okay, so for the civilians and all. Let, let it be restored back, okay? So that is what they came up with. Next is protect the self-respect of the Telugu. So this uh, especially came uh, from uh, this Andhra Pradesh, okay, in the year 1983, saying that uh, under the leadership of N.T. Ramarao, okay, you might have heard about this person in Telugu movies and, and all, okay, he's the leader of Telugu Desam party and he came up with this uh, slogan saying that uh, protect the self-respect of Telugus, okay, so these are the few slogans they came up with uh, uh, during all the election campaigning. So most of the people they come up with many very you know uh, like um, it would be a music to your ears. Okay, like it would be a music very like you feel that okay something great is gonna happen. You expect many things, right? When it comes to election, people do expect a lot of things. So these are the slogans that would help. Okay, even the uh, representative and even to know what exactly they are planning for their policies, what is their policy, what are they concentrating upon. So you people will get to know about those things. Okay, through these slogans, they are reaching out. So the next is, yes. Okay, so when it comes to election campaigning, that too in the democratic nation, it is best to leave the power. Is it a good? Imagine now uh, you have this political uh, parties, right? Even the candidates are there. What if the whole election work is given to the electoral uh, parties, uh, sorry, your uh, political parties and the candidates themselves? Okay, to conduct all the election campaigns and all. Okay, like. Not, not election, but yes, election campaigning. Whole election campaigning is given in the hands of political parties and the candidates. What would happen? Without any restriction, without any uh, interruption from the government, what would they, what would they do? See, the, the way they want, definitely, sometimes it is necessary, like how they have to conduct and all. But there has to be certain regulation. Somebody has to regulate it so that to give fair chance to all the parties. It so happens that if at all we allow only the candidates and the political parties to carry out the election campaign, it goes difficult sometimes because you know what happens? People will do whatever they want without caring for the other person, without caring for the other party. Maybe if at all that is done, the strongest party may dominate the other party, right? So this has to be stopped totally. That's the reason what these people are doing. They are regulating it, okay? So that there would be a fair chance to all the parties. So all the parties would enjoy the uh, elect election campaigning, okay? They should enjoy, right? Each and every person has come there. The representatives have come. They have to know the people. They should reach out to the people. And if they have to reach out to the people, definitely they should know what exactly, uh, like uh, they should uh, can do this campaigning, right? So that is what is uh, has to be allowed. If at all, only the parties, okay, or say the candidate is given the whole freedom to do whatever they want without any regulation from any of the government or say election commission, 
So how would, uh, will that be a fair campaigning? Definitely not. So it may not uh, be carried the way it is necessary. That's the reason what happens that has to be regulated so there are certain rules which are which have been uh, come up okay so you know very well nowadays election when it comes to election people get scared right so because um, a few things you know it okay i need not tell it a few candidates what they do they uh, like uh, supply certain things they give certain things maybe goods free goods a uh, few people do give costly items distribution of these things and all is happening even they give money sometimes so those things is it a good thing is, are these uh, coming under fair campaigning do you think so it is fair is it good? Is it the right way of campaigning? So that's the reason there are certain rules here. So the candidate here, okay, he cannot bribe or threaten voters. Mm. Okay, so whether this particular thing is just written in the book or really they are doing this, aren't they bribing? Don't you think that they, are, they do bribe? Yes? Okay, uh, maybe the rules are just uh, stuck up or say it is just for the sake of books and not for, not for actual performance. Maybe. Yes, uh, the very first thing is the candidates who sir, are conducting the campaigning, okay, election campaign, they should not bribe or threaten the voters. Can they threaten saying that if you don't vote, you know, like definitely you'll be facing some other, other problem. I make sure that you don't get any government jobs or maybe uh, I'll not, um, you know, I'll kill your daughter or maybe like they would say, I would... Uh, not allow your son to get any job, uh, the, the person should not, uh, these things, or maybe like they may threaten. If you people don't vote and uh, you know, make me win the election, imagine this would happen. Imagine this, these things would take place, saying that threatening, saying that if you people don't vote for me, I make sure I stop the water supply, the electric, electricity supply to your particular area. If this would have been happened, if this would take place, what would be the situation? Yes, have you ever thought, if anybody does this, what would be the situation? Definitely, you would not feel like voting to that particular person, first thing. The second is, this is not a fair uh, you know, election campaigning. You should win the hearts of people rather than making them or uh, threatening them. Okay, like making them vote you, uh, vote for you, uh, by uh, in the fear that yes, a so and so person would do something. So that that should not be there. It has to come from uh, the bottom of the heart that yes, I have to choose the representative who is really like you know very good to take care of each and everything. He has the knowledge. He is capable of doing all these things. So that has to come from within. So that's the reason there should not be any bribing or threatening the voters. The ca uh, candidates are totally restricted. If they do it, definitely there are chances that their tickets would be cancelled. Okay? Yes. So the next is appeal to them in the name of caste or religion. So again, this is very wrong. No person can appeal. Appeal is here like uh, approaching. Okay, you cannot approach them in the name of any of the religion or say caste, saying that hey, you are from my caste itself, right? So see, if you do some good things for my, uh, you know, uh, if at all I win because of you people, your oats and all, definitely I'll be doing something uh, for the better uh, thing or something, uh, you know, for the religion or caste and also that should not be done. So that is, again, something which is not fair enough. Okay, the next is using government resources for the election campaign. This is again the worst thing. You cannot, you should spend your own money, okay, for campaigning or your party's money. That is different. That is left to you people, whether uh, you spend it on your own or maybe through your party you will be spending that is left to you people so and that is totally in the hands of the candidate itself but yes you cannot use the government amount resources the reason is it is not only like uh, uh, money but again even if you want to use any government vehicles and all that is not allowed because it is for the betterment of the public it is for the public sake they are giving it is not for you people as once you win definitely you have all the rights over the uh, 
government resources. So before to that itself, you cannot expect all those resources. That's the reason while campaigning, you cannot use any government resources so that you can win the election. So that is totally uh, prohibited. Okay. So next is you cannot spend more than rupees 25 lakh when it comes to Lok Sabha election in a constituency and more than rupees 10 lakh uh, for a you know assembly uh, election uh, like in a constituency in an um, assembly election so that that is uh, totally like uh, it is prohibited or say you should not spend more than necessary okay that is what is expected so 25 lakh when it comes to Lok Sabha election and 10 lakh when it comes to your assembly election assembly election assembly election only that much of amount has to be spent a uh, few people do spend more than that uh, but if at all it is uh, for the betterment of or welfare of the people then sometimes it is allowed actually it is 25 and 10 that itself is expected so the next is yes now they have put certain restrictions right maybe they should not threaten uh, they should not bribe what if they do? How uh, these things will be regulated? See, if they do any of the said restriction, if they uh, use uh, the resources belonging to the government, or maybe they are, uh, you know, like uh, bribing, they are bribing, or maybe like they are uh, totally using the, or uh, they are uh, like uh, uh, threatening the people, saying that if you don't vote, so and so thing will happen. If these things they do, when those restrictions are put by the uh, law commission or say the government itself. So like when it comes to these things, when the law itself is, or the law itself has been put a restriction, and if you people do that, so how it is regulated, see? Uh, there are chances that the their election can be rejected by the court even after they are so elected. Now, what happens if at all the votes are uh, received out of threatening or uh, through all these malpractices, what we say? If at all that is uh, done through those things, then definitely what happens? Like, they, though they win the election, the election stands to be totally rejected because they have used all the uh, wrong way okay they have used all the wrong way of uh, winning the election so that's the reason that is totally prohibited so apart from these uh, this the political parties in india have agreed for a code of conduct okay so they have come up with a code of conduct for election campaigns so they themselves have done certain code of conduct okay for the betterment of or to have a good uh, like election fair election justifiable election or say something that is uh, fair and uh, you know within uh, the limits okay so to have those things they have come up with a code of conduct so let us know what actually it is there okay in the code of conduct very first thing is they cannot use any place of worship for election propaganda okay to carry out all the election works or even if they want to have meetings and all they should not use excuse me the place of worship okay it may be temple church or mosque doesn't matter any place of worship so that matters so no person can use it okay so that is the main thing code of conduct so use government vehicles as i told you government resources should not be used so when i said this it means that they should not use any government vehicles aircrafts and officials for elections no government officials can be used uh, to uh, conduct this uh, election campaigning and all okay so again that is totally prohibited so once election are announced Ministers shall not lay any foundation stones of any projects, take any big policy decisions or make any promises of providing public facilities. So this is again a main thing. Now imagine the term is getting over. Okay, and once the elections are announced, that elections will be conducted on, on so and so date and uh, you know the election commission is already formed, like all these things that is ready already. At that particular point, no minister, including whosoever it is, at the higher rank or the lower rank doesn't matter no minister can put up any foundation nothing but he doesn't have any uh, right to lay down a foundation nothing but if at all he is planning to start up a new project then definitely he should not lay any foundation to carry out such a project okay 
nor he can take any big policy decisions. If at all any policy decisions were pending, he cannot take those things because the next minister don't know like who will be the next minister. So now the election has been already announced. So that's the reason they have to take care that they should not conduct all such things and make any promises related to any of the public facilities. So to carry out any of the public facilities, they should not promise saying that okay, uh, like we'll be conduct we'll be having uh, so and so public facilities will be done all these things should not be done so again that comes under code of conduct now now that you know like we have come up with uh, uh, yes we have already conducted election now right all the election campaigning is over so how the pulling and counting of votes are done is it like uh, uh, are you allowed to go there and check it out so how the things will be there so let us know about those things so election day so everybody will be excited right because they are see voting is something that, that creates uh, that itself is an excitement now let me tell you this uh, last uh, this 2019 election i was so excited for uh, election uh, something happened that is unfortunate for me that is different let us keep it aside but yes when it comes to election each and every person will be happy because they get a chance to uh, vote and let me tell you once a person attains the age of 18 years and suddenly you have got uh, this election uh, notification the person will be very happy because one thing uh, majority the second is uh, they are voting, they are uh, choosing their leader till they that was not allowed and now that it is allowed. So that is a kind of happiness. So the, it is the final stage of election definitely because it is the day wherein voters cast their vote or say pull their vote. Okay, nothing but they uh, uh, vote for the person they want to. So the polling booth shall be there. Okay, it shall be located in the schools and all you might have come across. Now recently it has happened, right? So you might have come across many schools will be selected for conducting these elections or even government offices, okay? Certain government offices will be uh, like engage for the uh, conduct, like uh, to conduct this uh, election okay like it would be called as pulling booth and every person whose names are there that will be given in the at the early stage itself yesterday i told you right voters list so what they do they check the voters list and they make the forms and all like uh, however the votes will be done right so what they do uh, keeping uh, keeping in mind the population they form different wards okay they mix up the wards and uh, for each ward one particular uh, place will be decided either it may be the school okay government uh, the school or uh, some school like sco local school and or say government office so they have to get their voters id and all and uh, their names on the voters list can go to vote there so they will be uh, given the place right where they have to go to vote so definitely they would go there and they would vote so identification, okay, it is clarified by an official. See what happens as soon as you enter the voting booth, there would be a police uh, person. They'll ask you for your ID. If you are holding ID, you will be allowed inside. And then uh, the, the person will be having, okay, it would be like a classroom or any room as such. You'll be having a person a first person will be holding all those sheets so with the voters list okay like the voters name with their photo age and all the name uh, uh, like a whole thing that is necessary for voting those things will be given and yes you will be taking your voters id right and even the slip given by the people okay like the uh, the person from uh, this uh, election commission okay he comes and gives you one slip that you have to carry with you so what they do taking the slip Okay, they check and they put a mark there. Okay, they uh, round up your name saying that yes, this person has voted. Then what happens? In the next person puts a ink. Okay, saying that yes, the person has voted. Then you will be allowed to vote. Okay, there will be like a closed uh, a place uh, wherein the uh, EVM, okay, like an electronic uh, voting machine will be kept. Okay, so you will be allowed there. Only you will be the person who will be going inside. Then you press whichever person. Like you will be having the person's name with their symbol. And there will be like uh, you will be having either sometimes green or sometimes blue. Okay, those buttons will be there. Once you press it, it beeps. Okay, it gives you a beep sound. So it is like, okay, you have voted. Okay, so that itself gives you that uh, it's an alarm saying that yes, you have casted your 
oat. So what happens? Uh, this is the process that would be followed. Then an agent will be allowed when it comes to political parties like he has to sit okay, outside the polling booth so that uh, just to ensure that uh, the fair election would be conducted and there would not be any unfair means or uh, few people what they do uh, in the name of other person they do cast their vote. So these things should not be done that's the reason one agent will be sitting outside the booth. So earlier days, uh, this um, voting system was different. They would cast the vote through ballot system. So when it comes to ballot paper, it is nothing but sheet of paper, a small sheet. Okay, wherein the name of the contesting candidate would be there along with the symbol and they would select that they would put around or something like that and they would put it in the box. So this was a common thing. Okay, earlier days, very uh, maybe like years together, 20 years back and all or 30 years back, that was the system what they had, uh, what they used to follow. But now we have EVM system, nothing but electronic voting machine, wherein I told you like the, the candidate's name, uh, the symbol, the very first is symbol, then the name, and then comes the, uh, like you will be having a button, wherein if you press it, it gives you a beep sound, so that it is like, it amounts that, okay, you have casted your vote. So that would be the thing. Now EVM has come into existence. So now, when it comes to pulling and counting of votes, see, independent candidates also have their own symbols. Do remember this, okay? It is not only about uh, these uh, voters, but even the independent candidates who are not in any of the political parties, even they'll be having their own symbols and uh, they are allotted by election officials itself. Now, the machine has a button wherein uh, the voter has to press and once the pulling is over, what they do? They totally pack it up. You can check it here in the previous, uh, this, uh, yes, in the picture you can see, right? See how it has been carried, right? So you can see the box there, right, kept. So all those things are, that is how they carry the machine. See, as I told you, uh, this is like uh, the Google or uh, this thing, okay? So in the uh, picture you can see, right? See, uh, here. So the name, okay? Then the symbol and then you have a button here. Once you press it, there will be a beep like this. Uh, it turns to red color and uh, that uh, tells you that yes, you have casted your vote. So what they do? They take up the EVM machines, okay, at a secure place. And on a fixed date, what they do? They open it and the votes secured by each candidate will be counted. Okay, so what they do? Like they, uh, on a fixed date, they get all these EVMs at one particular place, okay, of belonging to one constituency and the voting will be done. Again, the voting has to be fair counting, or, sorry, the counting should be fair counting, okay? So again, the agent of a candidate will be left there so that there would be a fair uh, counting. There should not be any um, unfair means there should not be any other means so that you know the other person wins. So that's the reason the agent of the candidates are uh, like they will be present just to check so that the counting should be fairly done. And the candidate will uh, with the majority, okay, majority votes will be declared as elected or say he will be the winner of that particular election. So in a general election, when it comes to a general election, again the counting of this uh, votes in all constituencies will take place at the same time on the same day. So uh, when it comes to local election and all, it may differ. But when it comes to Lok Sabha election, uh, sorry, when it comes to a general election, sorry, okay, when it comes to general election, definitely what they do, like at a particular place, okay, like uh, the counting will be done at uh, a particular place at the same time and on the same day so this will be done so within few hours of the counting the results are out okay because you get to know right you might have seen in the news like the numbers keeps changing right yes so and so counting is done that has happened like all those things you have seen right so it uh, like the counting of the uh, once it takes hardly hours together okay the once the counting is done the results are declared and it becomes clear as to whom will form the government so now uh, Lok Sabha election and all it is conducted, right? So they, uh, the counting will be shown. So how it uh, gets the seats and all, so those things will be known and the declaration. And once you stand, like yes, there was a huge difference, right? 60,000, 40,000 sometimes. So all these things will 
uh, be shown there, right? So you get to know that, okay, so and so, um, so and so person, or say so many have voted for you people. You don't get to know the person's name and all, okay? Don't uh, take it in another way. But definitely you will understand that, okay, you have one by so and so seats and all, okay? So that is how the pulling and counting of votes are done. So when it comes to pulling and counting, let me tell you again, when it comes to election itself, it should be conducted very fair. Okay, fair election is expected from people. Okay, like even the people, people should not uh, do all this uh, unfair system and all. If at all their name is there in the voters list, then only they have to cast their vote and they should not force the other person to allow them to vote if their name is not there on the voters list. And the other person whosoever is carrying all this election commission and all, they too should be very fair in nature. And even the election campaigning, okay, no doubt these things are very common, right? Yes. So let me tell you, like, uh, the, so when it comes to counting, polling and all, it has to be very fair in nature. Understood, dear students? Uh, so today, can, let me conclude it here itself. In the next class, we'll be knowing about whether democratic elections are very much necessary, okay? Uh, like uh, what makes the election in India as a democratic one? Let us know about those things in the next class. Uh, with that, there are certain things that you have to know. So when it comes to, see, election, uh, uh, conducting election every five years, is it valid? Yes, it is valid so that, uh, see, actually what happens if there are no uh, changes in the government, okay, no, the government is not providing anything, the government is not uh, taking care of people or they are not concentrating on people and all, definitely they would like, the people would like to change the government, right? No doubt. The uh, elections are very expensive in nature, okay? There are few elections which has taken almost 3,000 crores and all. And, you know, there are few people like, uh, uh, the, a few elections which, which has taken more than even that, okay? So till then, nobody has questioned all those things, but yes. When it comes to ele uh, conducting of election, yes, it is expensive, but yes, it is very much necessary. So as we got to know like in the previous classes itself that why it is necessary, why election is uh, useful, all those things we have already discussed, right? So uh, with this, we'll be concluding it here itself. Uh, yes, when it comes to pulling and counting, uh, let me tell you once again, the election campaign has to be very fair in nature. They have a code of conduct for themselves and there are certain restrictions put by the, uh, like through the law itself. And when it comes to voting, it has to be very fair in nature, like uh, the, there should not be any problem in the ballot and uh, so the machine, okay, EVM machines and all, it should be fair in nature, no malpractices will be accepted, okay. Thank you dear students for your patience, enjoy your day and if you have any doubts regarding this, please let me know. Thank you so much.